So I have a picture here and I just pulled Skinny Pop's nutrition facts because I was super curious about like how people should in interpret food labels and read sodium because I'm always looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure I'm not getting super large amounts of sodium too because it just doesn't feel good presently and I know it's not good for my long-term health. But okay. So well, not only super large amounts, I'm saying the amount that's max maximally acceptable yeah. for long-term good health is very little free sodium other than what food contains. Right. Body can deal with a little extra, yeah. but not very much. Otherwise, it's going to lead to more risk of chronic disease. And if you and and, the, and the, us nutritarians are health enthusiasts who don't want to take the risk of chronic disease. We want to. We want maximum protection. And I feel I would just be selling people out if I if I. Um, acquiesced. Acquiesced to their self-destructive habits because then they can still get sick and I'm promising them they don't have to get sick if they do everything right. For sure. You're like, yeah. this is a big problem. Yeah. But for me, so I never add, I don't even have salt in my house, so I never add it to my food. So I feel like, you know, I always go for the low sodium option, but if I'm buying like low sodium veggie broth, there's still like 200 milligrams of sodium, low sodium pasta sauce or any pasta sauce I grab off the shelf in a hurry. Like if I'm at Whole Foods, I'm always kind of just interested in how much sodium is in a product right. if I want it to make my life easier. Right. And there are some pasta sauces with 700 milligrams of sodium per half cup. And if you look, but you can find pasta sauces with 180 milligrams of sodium per half cup. Yeah. There's, they're, they're, they're all over the place. Totally. So, you, so if you're a nutritarian, you're only going to get that pasta sauce. With 180 milligrams of sodium per half cup, not the but it's and so, but if it had if it had no sodium added, it wouldn't even have 180. Because don't forget the number of calories. If it says you know a half a cup of pasta sauce has 100 calories, if there's no added sodium, it would about half as much sodium. If it has more sodium than it has calories, you know they added salt to it. They had to have added salt to it. So you're saying above 50 calorie above 50 milligrams of sodium, we know that they added salt. Above. The amount of, if there's more sodium than there is calories in any food, in any okay. serving size, yeah. you know they added sodium. Because all natural foods have ha less than half as much sodium per calorie. Right. Right? That's fascinating. And so, the amount that's okay, so you can still say under eight, under 900 for if you're a female, under 1100 if you're a male, you know, in that favor, in a range before it gets to be disease creating, you, then you can't have more than a couple of hundred milligrams of free, of extra sodium into your diet. And I swear when I'm everything has salt in it, like I know that's why you made your food products because you just wanted to get your patients and people truly no added salt. No added sodium. So we have, so they can I have ketchups like, and sauces and dressings that, because you can't find those products it anywhere. It doesn't exist yeah, it doesn't, and it's right. crazy. So if right. I do grab something in a pinch, if I don't have your products on hand, I'm, I'm always interested to see like, what's my best option. Right. So Skinny Pop, which, you know, it's marketed, as, it's definitely marketed as the healthier popcorn. So I thought mm -hmm. it would be, a good example but it is popcorn so people do want salt they want oil they want it on this um so it says no added sugar which is good but it says 260 milligrams of sodium so 11 percent of your entire day and that's without and that's for one serving so that's for like five cups of popped popcorn and by the way it's so. making it 11 percent based on a 2000 milligram sodium diet which is oh. saying is acceptable and that you're would, saying half of that, so that really would be twenty two percent. If if they should not have more than thousands, so that's still a lot of extra sodium. And of course, that's how many calories in that serving? How many calories? One hundred thirty. So they're getting two hundred sixty milligrams of sodium per hundred per hundred thirty calories. It's too much sodium. Now, if that's the only sodium you had the entire day, and you didn't have any extra tomato sauce with sodium, you had no Ezekiel bread with sodium, you had no must and nothing else with sodium. No then Dijon, it, which has no, a lot of sodium. Yeah, yeah. nothing else. You, it's not so bad. But I prefer probably to be, you know, if you try, if it's added to another 260 from this food, another 260 from that food, and another 260 from this food, then, Sorry, it, pile up. then it piled up. So, so, so I, I know you said you want us to shoot for like a thousand milligrams of sodium a day and we're getting about like seven. Maximum. Maximum. It's fine to have 400. Really? It's, it's, fine oh, to just, it's fine to have no sodium. Most days I have zero extra sodium. Zero added sodium. Zero you're added getting, sodium. You're getting sodium. I'm getting 400 to 600 or 400 to 700 just in the food I'm eating, the natural okay. foods, the sled, okay. the, the cucumbers, the beans, the nuts, the seeds, the vegetables, the, you know, whatever I'm eating has some sodium in it. So enough, get, enough for the human species. Primates living in the woods don't salt fruits, their foods yeah. and they get plenty of sodium. And primitive humans in pop, these populations we're talking about that don't salt their food do not have high blood pressure or heart attack deaths in later life and don't see the blood pressure rising as they age. So this is an important concept that people have to get that Aging does not raise blood pressure. It's the years you're on salt that raises the blood pressure. Wow. 
Wow. That, yeah, people you know, do not think like blood that. Blood pressure is not associated with aging. It's associated with years, salt years, how many years you're eating excess sodium. Right. That and salt kinda... years means, do we know what salt years means? It means if a thousand is acceptable, then how many thousands did you consume over your thousand baseline for how many years? Right. If you had 3,000 of sodium a day, that's 2,000 above the thousand on the baseline. So that's 2,000 times how many years? 20 years? That's 80 salt years. Mm -hmm. If you had 3,000 a day, that's, or if you had 4,000 a day, that's 3,000 above the 1,000 times 30 years. That's 90 salt years. And your risk of having a hemorrhagic stroke or a cardiovascular death related to those salt years added up through your whole life. When you're talking about salt years, it's like exponential growth because these little changes, whether it's like a thousand or two thousand, you think it's not little day to day, but then as you add it up over fifty or sixty years, it's double. Like right. you know, people don't recognize the small damage day after day, year after year that causes problems to the body. They don't see disease that way. Right. It's like water runs off the waterfall, off the cliff, and hits a rock, and after thirty thousand years, the rock splits in two because the water hit it every day, little by little for 30,000 years. So they don't see that that's what disease is caused by, little by little, the chipping little you're chipping away, away little by little, and then you have some event that causes, and then people say, what did I do wrong? What, how did I get cancer? Must have been my divorce. You know, no, it's what you did your whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you, what, right. you know, some, you know. And this stuff is preventable. So like, even, yeah. and even after a diagnosis, it's amazing what nutrition could do, because even after a diagnosis, it has, power to repair their disease. Yes, of just, course. It's just amazing. But I think that there's not many people doing what we're doing. There's not many people Thanks saying- Thanks for including me. That. What's that? <laughs> Thanks for including me. <laughs> yeah, we're doing is we're saying that we can protect our body against diseases and we yeah. have the answers, Yeah. but it's not magic. It's not a gimmick. You have to really live a healthy life and you have to do it most, and you have to live a healthy life for many decades to earn good health. You can't just buy good health in a pill or a body. You can't go to a doctor and get good health. And you can't be protected from a heart attack with a statin drug or a blood pressure medication. You actually have to live the life and walk the walk and talk the talk. You I know? have a good story about this and I want to yeah. remember to share, but I just wanted to ask you one follow-up question before we wrap up. Yeah. So you're saying we get like a few hundred, like around six to 700 milligrams of sodium from naturally occurring foods, from just eating a nutritarian diet with no added salt. So how much salt, like excess salt can I have? Like, do I have to worry about any salt in my products or? Yeah, I'm saying that you're getting around, if you're, let's say you're eating 1500 milligrams of calories a day. Yeah. If you're getting 1500 milligrams. Right. You're getting less than half of that in sodium. So you're getting about 500, 400 to 600 milligrams of sodium in your diet, 400 to 600. Right. So you can take another two or 300 and still be well below 1,000. If I'm having 2,000 calories a day, which I'm probably not, I'm probably closer to 1,600 to 1,800. Mm -hmm. But if I had 2,000 calories a day, I'd be getting around eight or 900 milligrams of, so of 800, 700, 800 milligrams of sodium a day. I still have a couple of hundred extra and still be under 1,000. Right. So we could still have... 100, 200, even 300 milligrams of sodium a day from some food that's in addition to what natural foods have, yeah. that's still going to be protecting us against disease. That's right. still okay. However, these numbers add up rather quickly. But if these... you're doing it a lot of different things with extra 200, they oh add up. Oh my God, it adds up so quickly. And I'm also saying that when you're on a vegan diet or a plant-based diet, your risk of death from a sodium-related cause is increased it's more likely your death is gonna be induced by salt, it's not induced by meat. And are you aware that, for example, that in Asian countries that highly salt their food, the, type, they, the number one type of stroke they die of is a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. In the United States and in Western countries where we have more cheese and bacon and cheeseburgers and meats, our cause of stroke that we get are called ischemic strokes. So ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic strokes are different. How are they different? Well, ischemic strokes are caused by a clot, and they're related to your cholesterol level and how much meat you consume and things. So as your cholesterol goes up, your risk of ischemic stroke goes up. Okay. So the hemorrhagic stroke that happens more in Asian countries, 90% of strokes in these high sodium Asian countries are hemorrhagic strokes. And those are caused by these fragile blood vessels in the brain breaking open and bleeding into the brain, which can kill the person cause of death or keep them in a nursing home um, crippled for the rest of their life. Very right. severe strokes. Right, a brain stroke is very, right. yeah, you right. know it's bad. Now with those strokes, a higher cholesterol level is protective and a lower cholesterol is, it makes you at higher risk because the atherosclerosis, the process of atherosclerosis of building up fat and plaque on the inside and outside of blood vessel wall, walls right. adds some protection to the wall, thickening the wall so it doesn't break open. 
Mm. So more meat in the diet might be more protective against having a hemorrhagic stroke. Right. This is how, for example, the Atkins people or the paleo people, the carnivore people over the years could say, look, having a high cholesterol is better. Reduces strokes. Because look, it reduces stroke deaths for people with higher cholesterol. And it's right. actually low stroke. cholesterol that increases stroke deaths. Well, they faked you out because they picked a study from an Asian country where people are eating less meat and more sodium. And in those cases, yes, low, more meat is protective against right. hemorrhagic stroke because it leads to more atherosclerosis that has some res offers the blood vessels some resistance against breaking. But the salt intake over years that causes the inflammation and microvascular hemorrhaging over the years weakens the interior lining of the blood vessels so it can hemorrhage and break right. especially when we don't have atherosclerosis from a high cholesterol and eating meat and cheese and bacon right. so if you want to not have an ischemic stroke and be on a plant-based diet and not have a hemorrhagic stroke then you can't heavily salt your food because now the vegan person this person is a vegan what's their cause of death going to be well, if they salt in their food, it could be a hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic stroke. stroke. Why do we want to have offer people a risk of a hemorrhagic stroke? Right. You know, and it's so they might be a little more protected from eating all this junk food, you know, cheeseburgers, meat, all this stuff from a hemorrhagic stroke. But you're saying, but then you have to deal with heart failure and heart disease, heart attack, stints, and, I mean, medication. And, and ischemic stroke. And it's, let's right, not forget better. that. Right, so right. even though it's better for that but one it, thing. But in this country, 90% of strokes are ischemic strokes. And in Asian countries like from rural China and Japan, 90% of strokes are hemorrhagic strokes. Isn't it fascinating that all these health trends are based off literally what people eat? Like yeah, that yeah, we can right. narrow it down to those populations and it differs so much. Right. I mean, the science is right there to save lives. It's insane. Right. And the Catawba Island studies, they show the people that in their population, there's no heart attacks or strokes. And in their ancestors, there's no history of heart attacks and strokes. So even though people may have been salting their food for 5,000 years, they've been having strokes and heart attacks for 5,000 years. When we go back to populations in the country around the world that haven't been salting their food, you don't see any heart attacks or strokes in their ancestors or in the history of those people. Right. The evidence is pretty clear. Right. So what I was going to tell you is when I was talking to a guest at the retreat, he had a high, he had a heart attack last year mm. and you know, he came to the retreat and he really thought he was going to die. And he was showing me pictures of his hiking trip in Maui and he's off all of his meds, his diabetes meds. And he just couldn't believe it. And just talking to him one-on-one -on -one like that. Because he was in heart failure last year. Mm -hmm. He was almost d died. Oh, you know, yes. Yeah, and he just made said, a recovery. Like, yeah. He just said, it's all you. It's all thanks to you. And he was so grateful for what we did. And it just, I mean, I know there's so many people that reach out and thank us, but just like seeing how you affected this person's life, mm -hmm. it was just so beautiful. It yeah. was very cool. So I hope you know that was so cool. And I know you get that all the time, but yeah, I do. It's really, it's really always touching and always, always appreciate that. But it's mm -hmm. nice that I see people um, in drug stores, at airports, at movies, all over. People say, "You saved my father. Yeah. You saved my mother. Yeah. You something happened to you. Yeah. You saved my life." Yeah. I'm in. Um, it's funny because I was in um, Costco with a face mask on. And I had a face mask on. How could they even see me? Yeah. And they said, Dr. Furman, you saved my life. Yeah. So how did you know it was Dr. Furman? I'm learning, um, you know, whatever. It so really fun. works, it's though. So That's yeah. what, it's just so cool. Even when mm. someone thinks they're going to lose their freaking life and they're able to turn it around. It's amazing. Right. And, you, and so. also, you know, doing something not perfect, a little bit off, that helps people get better, but it's not the perfect diet, but it's still in the right direction, helps a lot of people. But it doesn't help everybody. Mm -hmm. You want to, you, you got to give people the most um, effective and perfected viewpoint of nutritional science. Because for that person, that little difference could make the difference for them. Right. Whether they have dementia or actually a stroke or whether they really never have a cardiac arrhythmia or go into atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. These little things I talk about that make a nutritarian diet different than other people's recommendations can be critically important for certain people. Right. And we see people like what's so cool about having the retreat is you see it. So in your face, mm. we see people make little changes and keep coming back to the retreat because they're still having issues and they haven't yeah. got it. They haven't got it. They haven't got it. But they come back three times. They come back four times and then they, they like get it. And they're like, I can do this. Like I can do this forever. Yeah. And it's not bad. It's not scary. I know how to do this. And then you see them like transform and you're like, Yes. You got it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, a shame that some people didn't get it the first time. But yeah. food addiction some is, people a, is can. A, some people most people do, but some people just need a, a, yeah. a refresher. And the cultural, I mean, they're dealing with cultural challenges, spouse challenges. Like there's yeah. so much more around the conversation about food. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, but they can do it. In the end, they always do it. Which and, is cool. and don't forget before just to emphasize this, your taste buds get stronger when you're off salt. 
and you enjoy food more, not less. You're not taking the taste out of food. Now artichokes going to have be more flavor. Lettuce is going to have more flavor. You have, everything you eat is going to be more flavorful totally. because your taste buds get stronger, not weaker. And I've read research that backs you up on that. Mm -hmm. So I've taken other people's word for it too.